Hi boys and girls, it's Mrs. Myers. I am here with our newest Scholastic News. If you wanna go ahead and grab that, uh, we're in this together and your highlighter, we will go ahead and get started. We're gonna start first with our video. Dr. King, a leader and a hero. Do you recognize this man? People all over the world know his face. They know his name. Now you will too. This is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And he was an American hero. Dr. King was born in Atlanta, Georgia on January 15, 1929. That was more than 90 years ago. Here's a picture of Martin when he was six years old. He loved riding his bike, playing baseball, and eating ice cream. Martin's best friend was a boy who lived nearby, but that changed one day when his friend told him they couldn't play together anymore. His friend was white and Martin was black. His friend's father didn't want his son playing with a black child. This made Martin sad and angry he didn't understand why he couldn't play with his friend. During that time, there were laws in parts of our country that kept white people and black people apart. Keeping people apart like this is called segregation. The law said that black people and white people had to go to different schools, parks, and restaurants. The schools and parks for black people were often old and run down. The schools and parks for white people had newer books and better playgrounds. In some states, black and white people were not allowed to use the same water fountains and bathrooms. Buses were segregated too. When Martin was all grown up, the laws hadn't changed. He and many other people knew these laws were unfair, and the laws made him very angry. But he was a peaceful man. He did not want to use violence to change the laws. So what did he do? Dr. King used his words. He wrote letters, newspaper articles, and even books. He wanted to persuade people to end segregation. He organized marches. He led big groups of people as they walked through streets. They all thought the laws were wrong. Other people saw these marches and began to ask themselves, are these laws really fair? Dr. King also gave speeches. He spoke in front of thousands of people. In 1963, Dr. King gave his most famous speech at a big march in Washington, D.C. He talked about his dreams for the future. He said he believed that someday the world would be a better place. My poor little children one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. Dr. King's words made people feel hopeful. When he spoke, the crowd cheered and clapped. Some people cried and hugged each other. They also believed the time had come for things to change. His dream helped other people dare to dream too. There were still some people who didn't want the laws to change. They were angry with Dr. King for trying to change them. They tried to hurt him and his family. That was scary. But Dr. King was brave. He didn't let those people stop him. He kept working. He knew he was doing what was right. Dr. King was a great leader he inspired many people. He made them feel brave and strong. He made them believe that together they could make a change. 
it can be hard for one person to change the world on his or her own. But when thousands of people work together, they can make a big difference. And they did. It took a long time, but the laws of segregation did finally change. Dr. King's leadership and hard work helped make the world a better place. Dr. King is no longer with us. Still, people remember him and continue his good work. We celebrate him every year in January on his birthday. On this day, we take time to think about his life and what he did for our country. But you can celebrate him every day. You can spread his message of love, peace, and fairness by treating others with kindness and respect. All right, boys and girls, let's take a little deeper and get to know um, Dr. Martin Luther King a little bit better. Oops, sorry, boys and girls. Here was a brave black leader. He worked hard to change our country, but he didn't do it alone. He worked with other people. As you read, think about why it is helpful to work together. Dr. Standing up together. Dr. King was born more than 90 years ago. When he was a little boy, black kids and white kids could not go to the same schools. They could not play in the same parks. Some restaurants did not let black people eat there. Why? Keeping people apart. There were laws in parts of our country that kept black people and white people apart. This is called segregation. Segregation made life harder for black people. But Dr. King was proud to be black. He knew segregation was wrong and unfair. The laws needed to be changed. All right, boys and girls, let's take a minute and let's see if we can find um, that word segregation. Let's highlight that word. We've heard that now in the video that we watched and then also in our reading. So we know that segregation um, kept right here, kept black people and white people apart. And so we've heard um, a couple of examples of that. They weren't allowed to go to the same school. They couldn't drink out of the same drinking fountain. So take a minute to highlight what segregation means. It means that it kept black people and white people apart. Dr. King, the leader. When Dr. King grew up, he worked hard to change the laws. He worked in peaceful ways. He was a great speaker. People listened to him. They liked his ideas. He also led peaceful protests. He led big groups of people. They walked down the street together. They held signs. They sang songs. People saw the protests on TV. The protests made more people think the laws should be changed. Great, okay, let's go ahead and highlight that word protests. So we know that Dr. King really, without a doubt, which he was correct, that people should not be segregated. Um, and so he decided that he would have peaceful protests. And that was really key for him. He did not want to have angry protests. He did not want to hurt other people with his protests. So he had peaceful protests. So let's find where it tells us what kind of protests he had. So we know that there were big groups of people in his protests, at his protests. 
They walked down the street together. They held signs and they sang songs. And so you can see here are, um, here's Dr. King, and then we have people who are singing behind him and next to him, peacefully walking the streets. And then we can see over here, which they'll probably go over in just a second, but we can see um, people even protesting today. So it says people protest today too. Kids can go to protests with adults. And we see some kids here um, that says um, kids can make a change. Um, and then I can't read. I think this says it's not something um, and about the skin color. So kids can protest peacefully too, even today. Bringing people together. A peaceful protest does not keep people apart. It brings them together. They stand up for what is right together. This is powerful. Dr. King was a strong leader. He was brave, but he had a lot of friends by his side. They were more powerful together. It took a lot of hard work. It took years of protesting, but some of the unfair laws were changed. The work goes on. Dr. King is no longer alive, but his good work goes on today. People still peacefully protest. They come together to stand up for what is right. You can stand up for what is right, too. And having a friend by your side might make it easier to do. It might make you feel brave and strong, just like Dr. King. By Carrie Acer. Dr. King protests with others in 1965. People protest today, too. Kids can go to protests with adults. All right, boys and girls, let's check out what we're gonna do together today. So this is a timeline of Dr. King. And so you can see here that the this this is what a timeline line looks like. It kind of reminds me of a number line. And it tells us um, what some important years, like 1920, 1930, 1940, 1950, 1960, and 1970. And then in this timeline, it tells us important things things um, about Dr. King. And so you can see right here, this blue line, 1929 says that he was born. That was the year he was born. In 1944, he started college. In 1953, he married Coretta Scott. In 1963, he made his I Have a Dream speech. And in 1968, sadly, he was killed. So boys and girls, let's take a look at our first question. In which year was he born? Was it 1929, 1944, or 1963? So go ahead and think about that. See if you can find that on the timeline and then bubble in your answer. Mrs. Myers remembered that that was the first thing on his timeline. So 1929 was the year that he was born. Nice work. Which happened in 1953? So boys and girls, this says 1953. It says he was born, he started college, or he married Coretta Scott. Well, we see a picture of him, right, in with his his new wife, and so you're right. He married Coretta Scott. Okay, in what year did Dr. King start college in? Was it 1944, 
Oh, look at, there's his hat and his diploma and it says 1944. Nice work. Here's your bonus. Dr. King's first child was born in 1955. It says to click where that year is on the timeline. So what I want you to do is I want you to circle that year. Okay, so we know, boys and girls, here's 1950, and we know right here this purple line was 1953. And so he, his child was born two years after that. And these little lines each represent one year. So if we say 1953, this would be 1954, 1955. So you're going to want to circle that right there. Good work. Perfect. All right, boys and girls, let's go back to the beginning here. And I'm going to pause it we here are in we know it loves to do that. And let's listen to our song for today. What can one little person do? What can one little me or you do? What can one little person do to help this world go around? What can help another one? And together we can get the job done. What can one little person do to help this world? Brother Martin Luther King told the world I have a dream. We let this country's fight for human rights. We must fight for liberty till all of us are free to know we have justice on our side. What can one little person do? What can one little me or you do? What can one little person do to help this world go right? One can help another one, and together we can get the job done. What can one little person do to help this world? What can one little person do? What can one little me or you do? What can one little person do to help this world go around? What can help another one? And together we can get the job done. What can one little person do to help this world? What can one little person do to help this world? Nice job, friends. All right, let's go ahead and check in on our vocabulary today. Here is our first one. Whoops. <laughs> Sorry about that, boys and girls. Let's try that again. All right, here's our first one. Laws. Rules made by the government. People must obey the laws or they could get in trouble. In some places, littering is against the law. Segregation. Long ago, parts of our country had segregation. That means that black people were kept apart from white people. Black people couldn't go to the same schools, live in the same neighborhoods, or eat in the same restaurants as white people. Protests. At protests, people gather together to show they all care about something. These kids all care about the earth. All right, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed our Scholastic News today. As we enter our weekend, I'm going to encourage you to think about what is one little thing that you can do to make our world better. Don't forget to be kind and to love everyone, boys and girls. I'll see you soon. Bye.